Hi everyone, you are on How Fix It. In this video, I'm going to show you what to do if your laptop overheats. I created the complete list of eight solutions. Going through each step, you will be able to find a fix to the cause of the laptop overheating. My methods are applicable to any laptop manufacturer. It can be Asus, Acer, HP, Dell, Alienware, or any other laptop. Just follow the recommendations and you will know how to fix laptop overheating. The first step is cleaning the dust and replacing the thermal paste. In 90%, the laptop overheats due to a dust-clogged cooling system, especially a common problem of overheating and shutting down while playing games on a gaming laptop. With constant loads on the processor, the fans work at high speeds and draw in a lot of microparticles. Over time, these microparticles form a layer of dust on the radiator fins, which disrupts the internal airflow and overheats the laptop. Whatever you do, without following this step, you will not be able to get rid of the overheating of the laptop. Cleaning the cooling system and replacing the thermal paste is important laptop maintenance that is recommended to be done once or twice a year. Of course, it all depends on the conditions in which your laptop is working. The How Fix It channel has over 2,000 video guides on servicing laptops of various models, showing every step of disassembling, cleaning, and replacing the thermal paste. And all of my guides include reassembly. For more convenient navigation through manufacturers and laptop models, you can visit HowFixIt website, link in the description. I also recommend watching my video with the tests of the best thermal paste in liquid metal. Properly selected thermal paste will further reduce the processor's temperature. The link is also in the description. So, if your laptop is still overheating after replacing thermal paste, go to the next step, updating the BIOS. Updating the BIOS is a very important step, and I set it in second place after cleaning the laptop. I have repeatedly encountered overheating the laptop due to an unfinished BIOS version. This problem is widespread on gaming laptops of the latest models. This is because the manufacturer does not have enough time to release a new laptop model with a stable BIOS version. And also, with each release of the updated BIOS version, the laptop stability improves and fixes errors associated with the hardware. If your laptop has an out-of-date BIOS version, the overheating cause may be resolved after updating. The process of updating BIOS on a laptop is not complicated. Go to your laptop manufacturer's website. Next, find the Drivers and Downloads section. Specify your laptop model to search for compatible BIOS. Download the latest BIOS for your laptop. Run the download file. Make sure your laptop is plugged into a power source. Click Update, and the BIOS will be updated automatically. But for some laptop manufacturers, the process may be slightly different. So that the video is not too long, I will show the BIOS update process for each laptop manufacturer in a separate video. You can find the link in the description. If you updated the BIOS, but your laptop continues to overheat, go to the next step, updating the drivers. Updating the GPU and chipset drivers may seem obvious, but many people forget about it, which is essential for the system's stable operation. On the NVIDIA website, find the Drivers tab. Select the driver for your GPU and operating system. Click Download and install the driver. But if you don't know what type of GPU is on your laptop, use the automatic driver updates using GeForce Experience. This program will automatically download the correct driver for your system and optimally configure the GPU. I also recommend updating the chipset drivers. For an Intel processor, you can use the Intel Driver and Support Assistant. Download and install the application. This program will automatically select all the necessary latest drivers for your system, including the integrated Intel graphics. If your laptop has an AMD GPU, select Drivers in the Downloads and Support tab. On this page, you can download the drivers for both GPU and chipset. Also, you can update all drivers automatically using the AMD Auto Detect and Install tool. Drivers updated. Now go to the next step, removing malware from your Windows. The fourth step is malware removal. 
If your laptop overheats without doing anything in idle mode, it is most likely that malware is running in the background that is loading the CPU. How to check your computer for malware that may be using up your CPU. Restart Windows and do not start any programs. Open the Task Manager with the key combination Control, Shift, Escape. Now take a look at the CPU usage. If you are currently not running any additional programs, your CPU usage should be anywhere between 1 and 10%, just through Windows processes alone. Additionally, your computer may be run installing a Windows update, and the CPU usage will temporarily go up to 25%. But when the task is complete, the CPU usage should return below 10%. If the CPU usage is consistently above 10% and the laptop is overheating, it may be caused by malware masquerading as a standard Windows process. Some malware uses the CPU and GPU for different purposes, such as crypto mining, and appears in the task manager under the guise of a normal process, such as Cortana or Support Assist Agent. How to remove malware on Windows 11. Open the Windows Security Settings. Select Virus and Threat Protection. In the Virus and Threat Protection Updates section, select Protection Updates and check for updates. Go back to Virus and Threat Protection and go to Scan Options. Select Microsoft Defender Antivirus, Offline Scan. Then select Scan Now. The offline scan takes about 15 minutes, after which the computer restarts. You can check the scan results by opening Virus and Threat Protection and selecting Protection History. Windows Defender Offline Scan will automatically detect and remove malware or quarantine it. But it happens that malware has caused irreversible changes inside the system, and continues to return and load the CPU. In which case, the only solution to fix this problem is to reinstall Windows OS. In the description, I left a link to a video guide on reinstalling a new Windows. If the scan didn't find malware, or if the laptop continues to overheat, go to the next step a laptop cooling pad. A laptop cooling pad can effectively reduce CPU temperatures, but it doesn't work for every laptop. I have already done a detailed test, where I took several laptops from different manufacturers, as an example, to show in which cases the cooling pad will give a real result in reducing the laptop temperature, and also show for which laptops it's not effective. On some gaming laptops, I could reduce the temperature by 15 degrees Celsius due to the cooling pad. Also, you will find the answer to the question of how to choose the right cooling pad for your laptop. I recommend watching this video to understand if the cooling pad is suitable for your laptop. I left the link in the description. But if your laptop is overheating even with a cooling pad, move on to undervolting the CPU and GPU. Undervolting CPU. Very briefly, what is undervolting? This is a decrease in voltage on the laptop CPU. Therefore, by lowering the voltage, the temperature will decrease. This is one of the effective ways to get rid of laptop overheating. It also improves CPU performance. Can undervolting damage my laptop? Undervolting is not overclocking. Usually, it's safe for a laptop CPU. The worst thing that can happen, if you undervolt the processor too much, your laptop may experience instability or freeze, including the blue screen. I use Throttle Stop for undervolting CPU on a laptop. A link to this program I left in the description. Let's start undervolting. Press the Fiber button to open the Turbo Fiber control panel. Here you see a lot of options and sliders, but don't worry, the undervolting process is actually very simple. You need to change the values in the CPU core and CPU cache parameters. Let's start with the CPU core. Check the Unlock Adjustable Voltage box. Now we can lower the voltage on the CPU. To do this, move the offset voltage slider to minus 50 millivolts. Click on CPU cache. Follow the same steps. CPU core and CPU cache must have the same undervoltage. Why start with 50 millivolts? Modern mobile processors respond well to undervoltage, ranging from negative 125 to 165 millivolts while older 3rd and 4th generation Core i-series processors can only withstand undervoltage down to minus 50 millivolts. Therefore, a safe starting point for undervolting is minus 50 millivolts, and then you can gradually increase it. Click on Save Voltages immediately, Apply, and OK. 
Next, you need to check the stability of the CPU using the built-in TS Bench tool. Set the size to 960 and hit Start. If the stability test is successful, increase the value by negative 60 millivolts. You can progressively go higher and check for stability with TS Bench until you find the last point at which your laptop is stable. When you hit minus 125 millivolts, set the range to 250 millivolts and keep lowering the voltage. The greater undervolt, the colder the CPU will run. This can lead to temperature drops under a full load from 5 to 15 degrees Celsius. For my Core i7-9550H CPU, at a negative 155 millivolts, an error began to appear. and a value of negative 145 millivolts, the laptop works stable. Additionally, you can lower the voltage on the graphics core of the processor in the Intel GPU parameter. Start with negative 50 millivolts and gradually add negative 10. For my CPU, negative 40 millivolts are the limit. Once you've found a stable value for your processor, run any demanding game or benchmark application, and test the laptop with a long load. Sometimes, the test passes successfully in TS Bench, but the laptop may freeze in games. If this happens, increase the voltage a little by 5 millivolts. Additionally, you can run a stress test and CPU temperature monitoring to check the undervolting result. If you need to reduce the laptop's temperature further, you can slightly reduce the CPU performance. Again, open the throttle stop. Press the TPL button to open the Turbo Power Limits panel. Here, we will change the value of power limit controls. Uncheck Disable Controls. Set the value for long power and short power. In my case, it is 45. The value represents thermal design power, TDP which is the maximum amount of heat generated by a CPU. Set clamp to both values. Click on Apply and OK. My CPU is running at its maximum frequency of 39,000 millihertz. As soon as I apply the new parameters, the maximum frequency of the CPU is reduced to 3,500 millihertz. Only 400 millihertz reduces the power. But you can see how the CPU temperature immediately drops from 82 to 73 degrees Celsius. But if this temperature does not suit, you can further reduce power on your CPU to 38 watts. Additionally, check Speed Shift and set the maximum value to 40. The CPU temperature dropped even lower to 68 degrees Celsius. This way, you can limit the CPU's power until you get the desired results. My undervolting results. From 97 degrees Celsius, reduce the temperature of the CPU to 68. As a result, minus 29 degrees Celsius. But only this, the undervolting doesn't end. In a separate video, in more detail, I'll show you how to configure the program, how to change the turbo boost ratio limits for CPU cores, and also what to do if undervolting is locked on your laptop. The undervolting application is constantly updating to cover new features and functionality. With every significant update, I will release new videos and edit the link in the description to keep this topic up to date. Now I will show you how to launch Throttle Stop automatically on Windows Startup. Go to Throttle Stop Options. Check the Start Minimized and Minimize on Close options. Then click OK to save the settings. Launch Task Scheduler. In the Windows search bar, start typing Task Scheduler. Click Create Basic Task. Enter the name Throttle Stop and click Next. From the list of task triggers, select When I Log On, then click Next. From the list of actions, select Start a Program and click Next. Now, specify the path to the Throttle Stop executable file. Check this option and click on Finish. Check the Run with Highest Privileges option, then select Windows 10 from the drop down menu. Go to the Conditions tab and check all these power options. 
and click OK. You are done. Now in the Task Scheduler library, you should see a new Throttle Stop task. The next step is undervolting GPU. I recommend undervolting GPU because in a laptop, the CPU and GPU are combined with common heat pipes. Therefore, lower voltage on GPU will reduce overall heating of the heatsink and prevent the laptop from overheating. To undervolt the GPU, you will need MSI Afterburner and MSI Combustor. I left links to these programs in the description. Open MSI Afterburner. Go to the settings and check Unlock Voltage Control. If your MSI Afterburner looks different, go to Settings, then in the User Interface tab, select MSI Mystic Afterburner Skin from the drop-down menu. Launch MSI Combustor, make sure your NVIDIA GPU is listed, and select the maximum resolution supported by your monitor. Run a stress test. MSI Combustor will load the GPU to the maximum, and we will determine at what frequency it works. After 15 minutes of a stress test, at 100% load, the GPU has reached its maximum operating frequency. In my case, it is 1620 MHz. Your performance will differ from mine. GPU temperature is 77 degrees Celsius at 27 FPS. Click on Curve Editor, or use the Control F keys to open the Voltage and Frequency Curve Editor. Here we need to adjust the curve for the optimal ratio of frequency and voltage at maximum load on the GPU. We know the maximum GPU frequency. Now we need to flatten this curve at the level of the operating frequency. Use the core clock slider to reduce the value to minus 260, so that the curve drops below the actual GPU frequency. Let's start lowering the voltage from 1000 millivolts. Pull up this point to the level at which the GPU works. For me, it's 1620 MHz, but I recommend setting it a little lower by 10 to 15 MHz. So I put it at 1608 MHz. Now you need to flatten the entire line from this point. Hold down the Shift button, then right click and drag to the end of the line. Now apply the changes, and that's it. You've done the undervolting. If your laptop doesn't freeze, reduce the voltage by another 50 millivolts and do so until you find the minimum voltage at which your laptop is stable. After 900 millivolts, reduce the step-down voltage to just 25 millivolts. If you see the voltage too low, the worst thing that will happen is your laptop will freeze. The too low voltage will not damage your laptop. So, for my GeForce GTX 1660, the maximum is 775 millivolts. Dropping below this value, my laptop begins to freeze. My results of the undervolting. The temperature dropped by 6 degrees Celsius while saving the GPU performance, still the same at 27 FPS. Now let's save these changes to the first profile. If the GPU performance is not important for you, and the main thing is to reduce your laptop temperature as much as possible, you can set the slider for core clock and memory clock to the minimum value. You can also set the power limit to 80%. After a couple of minutes, the temperature dropped to 66 degrees Celsius, but the FPS also dropped to 20 frames. Save these settings to the second profile. You can now switch between the modes for different tasks. How to add MSI Afterburner to Startup Windows. Go to Settings. Check the two options Start with Windows and Start Minimized, then Apply. Click on the button with the Windows icon. Select the profile and click Apply. Now, Afterburner will automatically start when you start Windows. The next step is disabling Turbo Boost. So what to do if the laptop overheats even after undervolting? In this case, you can proceed to more radical methods. Disable the Turbo Boost of the CPU. Yes, disabling Turbo Boost will limit the CPU's performance, but it's guaranteed to reduce the laptop's temperature. Before you disable Turbo Boost, I recommend you pay attention to the manufacturer's recommendation and make sure that your processor's temperature does not go beyond regular thermal operation. What is the maximum temperature for a laptop CPU? I will refer to the official answers from Intel. So Intel says that their CPUs can run for a long time at core temperatures of up to 100 degrees Celsius, and in some cases, even up to 110 degrees Celsius. Temperatures below 100 degrees Celsius are completely safe, while temperatures over 100 to 110 degrees Celsius are not safe. 
That's why Intel sets the thermal throttling temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. The CPU is designed to automatically throttle and slow down as much as necessary to keep the CPU at a safe temperature. You can always follow the link, select a processor model, and find information on the maximum allowable temperature of the processor chip on the specification page. The Intel processors are well designed, and you shouldn't worry about it unless it prevents comfortably working on your laptop. Sometimes you need silence, but the laptop fans make a lot of noise. And sometimes the laptop surface is so hot that it causes inconvenience. You can disable Turbo Boost and Throttle Stop, the program for undervolting, and even easier to do this through the Windows Control Panel. How to disable Turbo Boost in Windows. In the Windows Search setting, start typing Power. Then select Edit Power Plan in the Props. Click on Change Advanced Power Settings. Expand the Processor Power Management option. Now open two options, Minimum and Maximum Processor State. In the two options, set the plugged-in variable to 99%. Click Apply and OK. I include a stress test and temperature monitoring to show you the results after disabling Turbo Boost. As you can see, the CPU temperature drops from 82 degrees Celsius to 57. The CPU speed also dropped from 3990 MHz to 2590 MHz. As a result, we reduced the temperature by 25 degrees Celsius, but lost CPU performance by 1400 MHz. If your laptop hasn't hardware issues, this should stop overheating. But if your laptop is still overheating, go to the final step of my list. Checking the cooling system. If you are on the eighth step, checking the laptop cooling system, most likely the cause of overheating is a faulty fan or heatsink. Let's start by checking the fan. Most modern laptops perform extended pre-boot system assessment, and all errors are recorded in the BIOS event log. How to view a BIOS system log. When you turn on the laptop, you need to press a key to enter the BIOS. It can be F1, F2, F10, F12, or Delete. Which of these buttons depends on the manufacturer of your laptop. Now you have access to the BIOS menu. Find the System Logs section, which may be called Event Logs. Also, your BIOS may look different from mine, but the logic is always the same. The System Logs section contains BIOS events and thermal events. The BIOS Events section has errors, fan malfunction. Depending on the type and version of the BIOS, the error may be called fan failed, fan error, or fan not working. In the thermal events, these are entries about the fan stopping. All of these errors indicate problems with the laptop's cooling system. What causes CPU fan errors? Let's look at the main reasons. Fans or air vents that are obstructed. Dust accumulation on vents or fan. Not enough ventilation. Physical damage, for example, a broken fan blade. Out-of-date BIOS and device drivers. In rare cases, it may be a faulty fan speed control chip. That is, the fan works, but not correctly, which causes errors. You should have identified and fixed these reasons by following steps 1 to 3. In this case, the only cause of incorrect fan operation remains. But before you buy a new replacement fan, I recommend checking the heat pipe. It may seem strange, but the thermal pipe that conducts heat from the CPU to the fan can be broken. Now I will explain why. How do CPU heat pipes work? A heat pipe is comprised of a copper envelope, a wick structure, and a small amount of working fluid inside. The heat of the processor is transferred into the pipe, and this heat will cause the liquid inside to boil and evaporate. The vapor moves towards the opposite end of the heat pipe, which is colder. Because the fan is blowing ambient air across the surface of the heat pipe, this removes the excess heat. The removal of heat causes the vapor to condense back into a liquid, and this liquid flows back along the wick to pick up more heat. And so the cycle repeats. How do heat pipes fail? If a microcrack occurs in the copper envelope, the working fluid evaporates through this crack, and the heat pipe immediately stops conducting heat from the CPU to the fan. This causes the laptop to overheat. The heatsink replacement is the only solution in this case.
I had such cases of laptop overheating when the heatsink was faulty. The reasons may be different, from low-quality copper alloy tubes, factory defects, constant overheating of the cooling system, or a laptop falling, which caused a micro-crack in the copper shell. You can check the heat pipe yourself. You will have to disassemble your laptop and remove the cooling system. You will also need a lighter. Now, using a lighter, start heating the heatsink in place for the CPU. With your other hand, hold the pipe on the opposite side where the fan blows. You should feel how the heat pipe gradually transfers heat to your hand. If you feel the rising heat, then your pipe is working. Otherwise, if you do not feel the heating, the pipe is faulty, and you need to replace the heat sink. If you have a gaming laptop where your cooling system consists of several heat pipes, check each separately. Even one faulty pipe will cause the laptop to overheat. So you've identified the cause of the failed cooling system. Now you need to buy a new compatible fan or heat sink. I'll show you how. The manufacturer's part number is always marked on the fan housing. Also, you can find the part number on the heat sink. Using this part number, you can be sure to buy a heat sink or fan that is compatible with your laptop. You can find many websites selling laptop parts, but I often use eBay. You will most likely find the right spare parts even if you just enter the laptop model. But I recommend searching for parts with the part number. Well guys, all of my solutions to fix laptop overheating are over. I shared with you all my experience, which I use in my practice. If you have a unique way to fix laptop overheating, write about your experience in the comments. I really appreciate that you watch my videos. For more info, check out the description below the video. I will update links related to this topic. You were on how to fix it, and see you next time.